How medaki ape? Chante washte na pe choose apelo. Nick Tilson a macha pe. My name is Nick Tilson. I'm a citizen of the Ogallala Lakota Nation. Um, most importantly, a father of four children. Um, in order to really understand the history, or to understand building resilient communities, we have to understand the history. Uh, I come from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. It's a place of struggle. It's one of the poorest places in America. Uh, but it, it didn't happen by accident. The Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and the poverty that exists here um, didn't, didn't happen, just so we didn't stumble upon this problem. And, uh, and so it's part of the history that we, we needed to acknowledge. And as a, as a community, in order for us to fi figure out how we get out of poverty as a people and how we're gonna build sustainable communities, we look to our past and realize that we lived in sustainable communities built around sustainable economies not that long ago. In fact, Indian people living on the Great Plains were sustainable economies. We had a whole lifestyle that was surrounded around the buffalo. It provided food, it provided shelter, it provided uh, societal roles for people. And we built our cultural and governance structures around it. This wasn't that long ago that we did that. It's also really, really important to understand that we came from a people of leaders who took leadership that living on the Great Plains in the way that we did a long time ago, although it's romanticized by Hollywood and other places, it was a hard lifestyle. It was a really hard way to live. But we had leadership. That same leadership that existed long ago is the kind of leadership that we need to, that we need to have today. We're in a place where conflict and a view of different resources created a challenging history for America where we believed as indigenous peoples, our, our view of resources was very different. And that, that led to challenges for, for the West. It led for challenges of how this country was built. And it led a lot of disconnect between people and the, and the natural environment. To really understand the challenges that exist in Indian country today, you have to really understand our connection to land. Indigenous peoples have a connection to all surrounding, especially land. So the stilling of our land and the industrialization of America was directly related to the plight of indigenous peoples in America. The other part of that is our whole entire identity as indigenous people was connected to the land. Our identity was really built around an internal foundation of who we are. And at one time in history, there was this saying, uh, kill the Indian, but save the man. It was just the whole idea to assimilate the American Indian into mainstream society. And policies were created around that. Entire policies were created of assimilating Native Americans into mainstream society and what that did to our human spirit. In, in the history of this country, in the history of American Indian people, that led us to a place of revolution. It led us to a place of, of basically denying that. Basically saying that the fact of us living and moving forward as a people, we're going to have to do that. The exact opposite of what was done to us. We need to reclaim who we are. The land loss that happened to us as a people really continues to have an impact on us today. The most important thing about all this is Today, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, located in western South Dakota, about 80 miles from where we're at, has some of the toughest challenges facing anybody in America. 80% unemployment exists on Pine Ridge. Over half of the young people are under the age of 26. Um, life expectancy for males on Pine Ridge is 48 years old, 52 for women. It's actually the lowest life expectancy of any community in the entire western hemisphere, with the exception of Haiti. And this is third world poverty conditions right here, smack dab in the middle of America, 80 miles south of here. But what's happening there right now and the movement that I've been able to be a part of is really, really exciting. Over the past 10 or 15 years, 
there's been a movement of us young people that have begun to reconnect to our culture, to our spirituality, to our identity. All those statistics that you, that you sometimes read and hear about Pine Ridge, we are of, the, of those statistics. We are of those places. And through, through our work, we've been able to reconnect to our culture and our spirituality. And in that, a sense, a whole entire sense of uh, responsibility has come from that. When we look at the challenges that we're faced with, we recognize that the, the answers to this, solving these problems is us. In fact, we used to sit around and complain about the challenges that we have um, as a tribe and as a community. In fact, in, in 2006, there was a group of us, probably about 20 or 30 young people that were sitting around a sweat lodge or an inipi, and we were complaining about the way that the res is, the challenges that we're faced with. We went into that sweat lodge and went into that inipi and the, and the, through, through, the, through our ceremonial way of life, a question was posed to us as a group of young people from our ancestors. And the question was, how long are you gonna let other people decide the future for your children? Are you not warriors? And they said, it's time to stop talking and start doing. To not come from a place of fear, but to come from a place of hope. That motivated us. That made us realize, yeah, who are we waiting for? And although I'm talking about Pine Ridge, what I'm, what I'm, the message that I'm saying is relevant everywhere. That led us to create an organization that says, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna grab the problem by the horns. We're gonna look at the reasons why poverty is persistent in our communities and we're gonna take full on responsibility for solving the problem. But we also recognize that in order for us to come to a place to do that, we had to get to a place of healing. And that's what this, when we talk about culture, identity, ceremonies, these things created healing for us to then take responsibility. Because a lot of our people and indigenous peoples in America have been broken. In fact, I would actually argue that a lot of America has been broken for a long, long time, not just the American Indian people. And so we started talking about re regeneration and, and resilience, that doing work in economic development based on regeneration, based on resilience, is as much at, about as healing the human spirit as it is as creating green buildings. What this eventually uh, led to is a process, a process of engaging our community members. Just to give you an example, a few years ago when we were doing community engagement processes on Pine Ridge, uh, there was a room, probably as much people that are in here, and we had stakeholders, and we had elected officials, and we had youth, and we had elders. At the end of that session that we had, I had a, a grandma come up to me, 92 years old. She shook my hand, she said, grandson, that was the best meeting I ever went to in my life. And I said, why is that? Why is that? She said, my whole entire life, nobody ever asked me what I wanted for my future. My whole entire life, nobody ever asked me what kind of jobs that I wanted, what kind of housing that I wanted. Nobody ever asked me that. She was 92 years old, lived her entire life on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. That, that was shocking to me because then I really realized what we're doing. What we're basically saying is a top-down approach that created the problems that exist in our community, that those days are over. That those solutions, they were never solutions. Those strategies created and perpetuated the problem. And, and that this movement of re, reclaiming who we are also has huge ramifications when it comes to policy, the way um, resources enter in our community. Um, and when, when we become empowered and take full-on responsibility, that we change the entire dynamic. Unkie in our language means we. And our goal has always been that we are better together. This process of engaging the community has led us to a huge vision. A vision of creating a planned community on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation with the highest goals of sustainability than any other community in America, 100% water reclamation, a hundred percent energy generation, one of the first net zero communities, energy communities in all of America. 
at ground zero, zero for poverty in America. This development is about housing, community, healing, education, about designing the kind of communities that we want to live and our ideas of tomorrow being actually implemented today. These ideas didn't come from architects. They didn't come from engineers. They came from the young people on Pine Ridge. They came from the elders on Pine Ridge. And by combining those ideas with our designers, we have created a, a design that we believe is going to transform not only Pine Ridge, but it's going to transform the world. And throughout this process, so many people told me, that's a great vision. That's a good idea. But your vision's a little too big, Nick. You're a little too all over the place. And every single time, 100% of the time, our answer was, that's just not true. That our vision has to be at least as big as the challenges that we're faced with. At least as big. And that's anywhere in the world. So three to four years later, I'm happy to announce that on June 22nd of this month, we're actually breaking ground for this development at Thunder Valley. <clears throat> and, and it's because our commitment to process that we have arrived at this solution. That our commitment to that this development and what we're doing is not a destination. It is absolutely a pathway. It's a pathway for people. It's a pathway to arriving at the solution. In fact, we hope that everything that gets inspired by what we're doing ends up being 10 times better than where we started at. We hope that the next generation takes it on even further. And this work also is about human capital. It's about people. It's about people coming together. Institutions, organizations, even governments aren't going to solve the problems. People helping people is the solution to solving the problems. And when people come together to build community from all walks of life, putting in hard work with one another, building, whether it be physically building houses, mentally uh, building community with one another, that's when you really see the true uh, fruit of this process. That's what we're doing on Pine Ridge. We really are a, a community of young people that have come together who said that we're going to take charge of our future and that we're going to build a community and we're going to tackle climate change through design. And we're going to do that because it's simply what's needed. It's a responsibility that we collectively have as a people. And that when we make our decision-making processes, we're not just going to look at money. We're not just going to look at the people. We're going to look at people, planet, and prosperity through one lens in every decision that we make. We're going to look at the cycles of energy cycles and water cycles, material cycles, so that we can actually build our communities by respecting our beliefs. This is the thing that connects us all, that if everybody lived like an American, it would take six planets to support life on Earth. That's just not right. We have to change that around. We have to get back to one planet living. And this community is on its pathway to becoming a one planet community that of principles of living within one planet by design. This isn't complicated. It's really about meeting the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This is a collective wisdom that we must all have. Even though Indian country represents some of the most challenging statistics in America, less than 1% of all philanthropy in the United States goes to Indian community. That's wrong. That's another thing that we have to change. We have a moral obligation in this country to make sure that nobody suffers like the people on Pine Ridge. And that obligation is all of us. In our language, we say midakoyase, that we're all related. Just like everybody in this room, just like everybody watching this, we have a collective moral responsibility to solving poverty, in the, in the poorest places in America, in honoring the innovation that's there. And we're working hard to solve those problems, and we want to share those with the world. Thank you. Woo.